Welcome again to Can You Believe It? We are exploring this subject of divorce and marriage. We've looked at the foundations of marriage from the Old Testament and the foundations of sin and where we get to where we are today. Now, when we look at the New Testament, what does Christ have to say about the subject of divorce and marriage? Dr. Kamal? Dr. Okay. Onesmus, Pastor Onesmus, thank you again. Here we are, continuing with the issue of marriage and divorce. And as I have, you have seen about me, I do not like to deal with issues of scripture from the New Testament first, because it is a continuation of this book from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It's a historical book that tells the, uh, what I call Christ's perspective on his purpose of creation, mm. living, and death, resurrection to eternity. Mm. So this Bible has to, this book, when you read this book, you always have to ask yourself a question. What does the Old Testament say? What the Genesis, mm. not the Old Testament, because when it comes to the, the prophets, they're dealing with uh, the, the consequences of sin, mm. and therefore they're dealing with Israel. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3 is talking about you and I, everybody, the Jews and the Gentiles, everybody, how they were created. And it implies that we must go back there to understand. In fact, Paul, as a Pauline theologian, I've come to see that Paul always relates everything he says to the beginning. And do you know who else does that? Jesus, mm -hmm. the creator of the heavens and the earth. Even him, when he is asked questions, he goes back to Genesis. Right. Uh, Dr. Joseph, why don't you go ahead and read Genesis? Uh, no, not Genesis, it's Matthew, right? Yeah, Matthew 19. 19, yes. I'll read from verses 1 through 10. Okay, if that's okay with you. Please read, uh, yes, please read uh, the Matthew. What we're reading about this Jesus now about marriage and divorce. What is he talking about? He's the one who created a man and woman. So let's go back. What does he do? Go right. ahead. Matthew chapter 19, verse 1. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went into the region of Judea to the other side of the Jordan. Large crowds followed him and he healed them there. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they no longer are two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. Mm -hmm. But it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality and marries another woman, makes adultery. All right. The disciples say to him, if this is a situation between a husband and a wife, it is better not to marry. Ah, ah, do you hear that? Can you repeat that and what the disciples say? The disciples say <laughs> to him, if this is a situation between a husband and wife, it is better not to marry. You see, that, the disciples react to Jesus rationally. They are listening attentively. And they are making analysis. Okay, Christ creates Colossians. Again, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 20. He, Christ, created all things, seen and unseen, principalities and powers, dominions, all authorities, everything, all things were created by him, through him, and for him. So this is Christ who creates the heaven and the earth. And is the one now here finds himself on earth dealing with a question that has really bothered mankind. Mm. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they have permitted, that is Moses had given them, a, 
the right to give a wife a certificate, not a wife to give a husband a certificate, but a man could give a wife a certificate of divorce. Okay? But since I stick to scripture, what does Jesus say? He said, you know what? It wasn't like that in the beginning. He goes back and he says the intention was that men and women remain whole. The relationship remain whole. But then sin comes and brings what? Sin. And he says, because of sin, your hearts were hardened. What does that mean? You are sinners. Moses decided, you know what? Instead of these characters who have, I go back to my, I hope you enjoy my, my illustrations. I love my illustrations. This way, see this, this. He says, all right, now, this woman is cursed and she is a sinner and she has issues. This man is cursed and he's a sinner and he has issues. These two now are living under sin. They bring, this one bring the basket of his sin as a man. This one brings the basket of sin as a woman. And since it was, they were created to come together and multiply, they can't escape. They cannot escape. Let me say that again. And this is controversial. I'm going to say a controversial thing here. Joseph, let me tell you something. You cannot but love a woman. And you cannot but love men. That is established in our DNA by God. There is an attraction he put in there, a principle of law, that you can't help yourself. You will be attracted to a woman, and you'll be attracted to a man. That one was in the beginning, before the fall. It was there, right? So that there is what? There is procreation. How are you going to procreate if you don't want this man and you don't want that woman? He decided he's going to put something there. So powerful. I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is, but you know it's there. It's complicated. Forces you to love a woman. And forces you to love a man. He created them as, you see, one. One. He said, you become one. How do you become one? He put some DNA in us that is impossible for man to escape. Because if he did not do that, there will not be procreation. There will not be children. And his decree that we must fill the earth would have happened. So we are stuck. You as a man, you're stuck. A woman, you're stuck. You're going to have attraction to a woman so, they are, so that they are children. <laughs> that, is what, that is what happened. Now, now, Moses sees, man, this attraction, this thing that God created, this is a mess. And he is the head. He's the head of, uh, he's the first lawgiver. He is the, he, he was actually the, the first president. He was a president. He was a, a Supreme Court justice. Uh, he used to have all the Israelis. If you read the Old Testament, you find that he used to, they all used to come to him and he will be the one who will make the decision on their behalf. And then his father-in-law comes and says, no, Moses, don't do that. Get other elders so that they can help you. But Moses was the one who did all this thing by himself. They used to come to him and he will pass judgment. So he said, listen, you, you people, you are fight all the time. I'm sitting here. The woman is coming. My husband, he is a psycho. He's crazy. He doesn't love me. He doesn't care. He, he he's beating or he's miserable. And the man comes. This woman, eh, she is emotional. She is crazy. And then there is war in the home. It did not start now. It has always been there. Look, I told you about Abraham and Sarah. I told you about Adam and Eve. They give birth to a murderer. And from there, murderers, murderers, thieves, hooligans, everything. They all come from men. So Moses says, okay, listen, I need to have peace. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this hopeless, miserable. You know, these kids, is, I've had it. So he says, all right, this is what we're going to do, man. All right, since you're the man, and again, if you go to the women leadership, 
go back to the leadership uh, episode. I say, man is the one who is given the instruction. He's ahead. I don't say it. The Bible says it. Okay? He is the leader. So, so this guy by the name of uh, Moses tells the man, okay, listen. Oh, man. So this is what you're going to do. Uh, if you, you marry her, but you're going to give her a certificate uh, releasing her from you. Why? Right? So that if she goes out there and she finds you know, another man wants to add baggage to his basket. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a man there who's like, oh, I think I need to add, I don't have enough problems, right? I have one, one wife. Uh, I have my own basket and she has, I want to add one, I want, I really desire to add another basket of misery to my basket. Uh, you give her a certificate. Mm -hmm. so, so she goes and if a man wants her, she goes, listen, I'm free. So there's no war. But remember, Moses is trying to, Moses, <laughs> Moses is, in fact, Jesus doesn't condemn me. He says, you know, Moses is doing it because people are crazy. <laughs> you, 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 you crazy people. He got sick. Remember, Moses had a hard time. They gave him such a hard time. Even he did not obey God. Eh? He's having these issues. They are complaining. You brought us out of Egypt. We, have, we did water. We did food. And it is a mess. And he doesn't want to deal with it anymore. So, hey, give her a certificate. Let her go. But Jesus is approaching it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. He says they were supposed to be together. Why? Because now here she is, right? She has given children. There are children here. Um, and where are the children going to go? It's tough. So Jesus is always looking at things, understanding that he's the one who said, you know, hey, listen, you have issues, you're cast. So he said, but it was not like that in the beginning. Now, what is the solution? <laughs> Jesus says, listen, I would like you guys to go back in the, to Genesis to, before the fall. He says in the beginning. He doesn't say after the fall. He says, my desire, my wish is that you go back to what it was when I created a man and a woman before Satan came over and gave them a contract. That's what Jesus is talking about. There is a misconception of people. They don't understand. Jesus knows already that there is the original and then there is a consequence. He is aware of the consequence. And it is the consequence that makes the disciples say, you know what, listen, the disciples are aware. They say, but we are fallen. We cannot go back to the beginning. That's what Jesus, the point Jesus is making. He's saying, you guys are sinners. But if it was me, I created you with perfection. But now you are under sin. And because you are under sin, Moses needed to work with you as if you are under sin. Because you are chaotic. You are producing thieves and hooligans and murderers. Because the Pharaoh was a son of a woman and a man. His soldiers were sons of women and men, executioners. Everybody is a product of a woman and a man. And they are evil. It's all have sinned. So Jesus says, you know what? That's where you need to be. What Jesus is saying then, he's, saying, he's challenging them. He's telling them, listen, you will never go back to the beginning. It's not going to happen. And he is laying the foundation for salvation. He is showing them the impossibility. He is showing them the impossibility. And the reason why he's showing the impossibility, and we're going to come next session to Paul, and you understand what I'm saying. He is not saying that this is going to happen. He knows it's not going to happen. That's why the disciples say, ah, leave it. I can't do, if that is the case, if you want us to go in the beginning, as you're saying, Lord, we can't. 
because we are foreign, we are sinners. This woman is foreign, I am foreign, we are in this basket together. Then he says, oh wow, that it is better that I stay by myself with my foreignness and I don't add this other basket of a woman here. But the problem is, Christ doesn't say it. He's like, is that gonna happen? Because you would desire a woman and you desire a man. And there has to be <laughs> reproduction. So this is the impossibility that Jesus is always bringing. Very complicated issues to try to show the Pharisees and the Sadducees and humanity mm. of how deplorable and how sinful they are. And they can't escape. Mm. It's cooked. The chicken is cooked. Mm. We have eaten the chicken. Yep. It is miserable. Mm. So Jesus is taking us to the original. But why is he doing that? Saying, no, you cannot divorce. He's saying, if I was to tell you as the God who created the heavens and the earth, I would like you to go back to the Genesis narrative. I would like you to go back before the fall. But he says, it's not going to happen. And to demonstrate it's not going to happen, Moses gave you a certificate. Mm -hmm. But if it was me, I would say, do not divorce. Mm -hmm. He is not unaware that they are going to divorce. He's telling them, if it was me from my the throne of God, you shall not divorce. But it's not going to happen. Yeah. You, you are sinful and you're going to divorce. You're going to fight. Uh, you're going to need a divorce. That is the argument of Christ. He's not saying, hey, listen, you will not divorce. No. He's saying, you know, you guys are sinners. So Moses gives you a certificate to divorce. And that's why, listen, that's why the disciples say, my goodness, then we will never be perfect. That's the idea of Jesus. That's what he's trying to tell them. You will not be perfect. That's why I'm here. To die on the cross to redeem you. It will not, it will not happen. They said we might as well not marry. He said, good idea. Because if if you follow the, the principle of Jesus, he says, you can't even look at a woman. Who does it? Have you? I'm a man, I'll confess. I confess. Not with pride, but under sin, like Paul says. The things I want to do, ah. Oh, I don't do them, but I find myself doing things that I do not want to do. And he cries and he says, who unto me? Jesus. What a wretched man I am. He said, who will deliver me? He said, but thanks to Christ Jesus, because by his grace, I'm saved. Because I can't save myself. Why? Mm -hmm. I will still need the certificate yeah. to get rid mm -hmm. of her. And I can't help it. I'm, getting, I'm married. I've got our children. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in this merry-go-round. It's a mess. But he says to the disciples, you know, disciples learn there. He, he, you know, the, the best thing about this issue, actually, that case there, is that the disciples learn. They say, oh my gosh, it's, it, it, this is a mess. Then don't get married. Stay single. But And, and then they're going, but you have, but we are married. They are married. And Jesus is going, yes, that's the point. That's why I am here. Because you guys are sinners. Everything about you is sin. And that's why I'm going to die on the cross. And after he dies on the cross, then you know the person who he brings up to explain all these things. Oh, that's the next session. And last session. All right. Well, tough, right? Is divorce permissible? We looked at the Old Testament and the New Testament, the words of Jesus, and Jesus is showing how impossible it is to live under this curse of sin. He says, life will happen. People will get hurt because of sin. But then we're going to look into Paul and we'll ask the question, what are the reasons and the causes that really we should kind of lay out there and say, because he has done this, I need to divorce him. What are the causes for divorce then? Yeah, we've laid the foundation. We know that we are in sin. But under what conditions or what situations should we use to say divorce is permissible? This is, can you believe it? Well, whereby we try to get into the depths of the scriptures and we put the sun from deep below under the pressures of life and bring it out 
for instruction. Continue to subscribe to our channels here and to continue to hear uh, the word of God without any apology. It's all sola scriptura, sola fide. Can you believe it?